Okay, so in this video I'm gonna show you how to create a thermal camera using the Arduino Uno. And as you can see, as I move my hand around, those LEDs change color. Also later in the video I'm gonna show you how to get much more details and get perhaps a video like this one. Here you can see that my hand is clearly visible. This video is sponsored by Infineray, but more about them later in the video. So let's get started. For the first part of the video I'm gonna be using Arduino Uno together with the infrared sensor AMG8833 and displaying the output on this 8x8 RGB LED matrix display. This one is from the company called SunFounder and it's in the form of the Arduino shield. But let's start with this infrared sensor. It captures 8x8 temperature values, so 64 temperature values, and sends it using the i square c connection. So I will connect it to Arduino Uno, the wind goes to 5 volts, the ground goes to ground, then the SCL, the serial clock, goes to A5, and SDA, serial data, goes to pin A4. There are two more pins on the sensor, but we don't need to connect those. Then we need to install a library, and if I go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries, and then search for AMG8833, there are at least two libraries available. I will be using the Adafruit AMG88XX library, so click the install button and click the close button, and then go to file, examples, our library, and open for example the pixels test. So this sketch should be reading all the values for those individual pixels, for those individual temperatures, and then printing it out using the serial communication. Let's just make sure that we have the correct board selected, in my case that's Arduino Uno, and click the upload button. And once the sketch is uploaded, open the serial monitor, make sure we have the same speed as inside the setup function, which is 9600 bouts, and we should see those values coming in from the sensor. So every second we get a new values, and those are temperatures in degrees Celsius, so if I move my hand close to the sensor, hopefully I should see some higher values, which seems to be the case, so you can see that now the temperature is around 30 degrees Celsius, if I move my hand back around, you can see it jumps back to around 22 degrees Celsius, which I guess it seems to be about right temperatures in my room right now. But it's hard to imagine what's going on just from the numbers, so maybe let's try to visualize those numbers. And what I can do is to copy those values into notepad and then replace those brackets with nothing, and replace commas with tab characters, and then also this bracket with nothing, and then copy those values into Microsoft Excel, and then use the conditional formatting for some color scales, and maybe this one might be the right one. So you can see it was kind of hot in the beginning, and then I've moved my hand around, it was even hotter, and then when I've removed my hand, it was getting back to normal values, so those green ones around 18 or 22 degrees Celsius. So I think that we can say it's working, at least it seems to be working, so let's try other piece of our puzzle, and that's this 8x8 RGB LED module. So for now let's disconnect the infrared sensor, and connect the RGB matrix SunFounder display. And again, since this is in the form of the Arduino shield, we should just snap it to the Arduino like this, and that should be it. If I open the documentation for the display, it says that we should install the RGB matrix library, which is located down here. So I will click this and download the zip file. And then inside the Arduino IDE, select sketch, include library, and select the zip library. And if I also manually open the zip file, there is a folder called examples, and there is one example called rgbmatrix.ino. So let's open this example. And if you look at the code, it's initializing the RGB matrix in the setup function, and then inside the loop it's drawing all the different characters with different RGB colors, with a little bit of delay in between those. So let's try to upload it to the Arduino and see how it looks like. And sure enough, we see all the individual characters in different colors. And I believe that once we go over all the uppercase and then lowercase characters, then we see some digits, and hopefully after that, we will also see some images. So I guess the display is working, but looking at the library itself, I don't see any way how to set the individual pixels, which is of course something that we want to do. However, looking at the documentation again, it also says that we can use the color Duino library. So let's just do that. Let's download this zip file and install it in the Arduino IDE. And there is also an example called the plasma example. So let's just try to run this one. So I'll copy this into clipboard, paste it into the Arduino IDE and upload it to Arduino. And we see a nice colorful plasma effect displayed on this LED display. And it looks very nice. I like the effect quite a lot. Also, if you look at the code, we see that there is a function to set the individual pixels of the display, which is exactly what we need for our thermal camera. So let's delete bits and pieces and only keep the code to set the pixels color. 
Starting from the top, I don't think I need this array and probably not this palette shift variable. I also don't need the distance function, but inside this plasma morph function, we do set every single pixels for every single X and Y position. So I'll keep this in here. And I actually like this part because it looks like that we are setting the color in the HSV color space, which is the hue, saturation and value or hue, saturation and brightness, and then converting it to the RGB values, so the red, green and blue values. And this is quite nice because if we keep the saturation and value to the maximum values, we get a nice rainbow by just changing the hue so I will keep this as well but I don't need this value I will delete it also from here I don't need the palette shift but I do need to keep the flip page then there is the color fill function which I don't really need and inside the setup I think that the only thing that I need to keep in here is the initialization function I can delete the rest of the stuff and then I will copy bits and pieces from the plasma morph function into the main loop function so I'll just pretty much copy everything delete the main loop and maybe get rid of this comment sorry for that and again I paste it inside the loop and for some unknown reason the x and y values are defined outside those loops so i'll just keep it inside and this way i don't need to define it up here and for the beginning let's also set the hue to be the maximum value so 255 and it should be a good starting point so let's upload it to arduino and while it's uploading you can take a guess what will be the pixel color on the display and if your guess was white then you were wrong and that's because as you can see all the pixels are red and it makes more sense once you take a look at the HSV color space, for example, using the color picker from the Photo P application. So here we have the hue, saturation and brightness value. And sometimes the name value is being used instead of brightness, but it's the same thing. And we have the brightness set to 100% as well as the saturation set to 100%. And you will immediately notice that the color is red. So how come the color is red when the hue is set to zero? And that's because the hue is often set in degrees and you can imagine this being a circle so as you increase the hue you will go from this rainbow to green to blue to pink all the way to the 360 degrees and when you jump to the 360 degrees it will actually jump back to zero so the zero and 360 is the same thing in our case we are setting it as a value from zero to 255 so 255 will be same as a zero if we would like to set the white color we have to actually set the saturation back to zero so this way it will be white and at that point setting the hue to any value will make no difference it will still be white color however in our case we will keep the saturation to 100 percent and then again we will be changing the hue to get this rainbow color so let's try that in the arduino code let's set the hue to go from 0 to 255 based on the x direction so it will be 255 divided by 8 multiplied by x and let's upload it to arduino and since we now see the rainbow effect on the real Arduino, I think it's time to merge this sketch together with the other sketch. It also means that we need to connect both the infrared temperature sensor and the RGB LED display. And that's kind of a problem because the display blocks all the pins. The good news is that it's not using the i c pins. If you take a look at the display from the bottom, it actually lists the used pins. We still have to get a little bit creative in connecting both modules. As you can see here, I just inserted another wire in between those connections. For a more permanent solution, I could probably solder those wires to the PCB of the display. So with everything connected, let's start merging those sketches. On the left side is a sketch for reading the infrared sensor values, and on the right side is a sketch for setting the RGB values for those individual LEDs. So as a first thing, I will comment out printing the values into the serial port, and then I will copy the code from the color Duino. So I will paste it in here. And I want to of course set the correct hue value based on the temperature. And the temperatures are stored in the pixels array, but this is a one-dimensional array, so we need to read it properly, which means that I have to say pixels of the index y times 8 plus x. And I would like to remap this value to some hue values, so I will use the map function. And let's say the temperature goes, for example, from 15 to 30 degrees Celsius, which is a standard range, kind of. And I want to map it between 0 and 255, like so. I will also decrease the delay to just 100 millisecond. I also need to include the color doing the library in our sketch and then call the initialization function in the setup function and hopefully that should be everything so upload it to arduino and see what we have and as you can see as i move my hand closer to the sensor it's changing color and as i move it away it's also changing color so it seems to be working just fine and even the color gradient is kind of reasonable i mean the colors looks nice since blue and green colors are showed for the colder areas and red and yellow for the hot ones and i think it's quite fun to move the sensor around and see the temperature as colors now I promised you to show you how to get much bigger resolution, but before I do that, let me show you this module. And it looks like it has bigger resolution, but that's just this 8x8 resolution being interpolated between those individual pixels and the displayed on the LCD display. If I show you the back of the module, you can see that the sensor is very similar to ours, actually it's very same one. But this module might be a good solution in case you don't want to build your own version. You just connect it to the USB power supply and it immediately works. 
you can see that it also shows the temperature values. So let me finally show you how to get this image quality. And this is using the thermal camera from a company called Infiniray and the module is called P2 Pro. And this tiny little camera is supposed to be used with your phone. So you have two different versions, one for the Android phones and one for iPhones. And you get this in this nice case together with this carrying bag and this small piece, which is a close-up lens which attaches to the main camera by magnet. As soon as you connect this to your phone, the phone will automatically tell you that you have to install certain application. And once you run it, it looks something like this. You can switch between capturing photo or video and you can also switch between different palettes and there is quite a lot of palettes to choose from. I like this rainbow and this iron red the most probably. But you also have this jungle and golden red and medical dim light or gold, I wonder how they come up with those names. This red hat is actually quite useful as well because it only shows the harder areas in the color, everything else is grayed out. Also as you can see, by default the application shows the temperature in the middle of the frame as well as the hardest and the coldest spot. You can change it in the settings and if you want you can just disable the temperature. If you want to get more details about the temperatures, you can enable the professional thermometry and this will give you access to more tools like setting three different points and getting those temperatures or drawing a line and finding out what's the hardest and coldest spot on that line or doing the same thing inside a frame. If you select the scale tool and then click this lock icon, you can drag the min and max temperatures and select in which areas you want to see the color and the rest of the stuff will be grey, so this way you can restrict the color palette. You can also show the overlay picture from the camera, but this unfortunately is not working very well. Those cameras are misaligned, so for some close-up shots, it's almost impossible to have the subject in both frames. Finally, you can set some advanced settings, and once you do, I guess the readings will be more accurate. Now we've already seen the output from our 8x8 pixel camera, and while it was looking nice, it wasn't very useful because you couldn't see any detail. This camera by comparison has the resolution of 256 by 192 pixels. And while it might sound small in the comparison of the normal camera resolutions, in the world of thermal imaging this is really a huge resolution. And it really allows you to see all the details and use it for some real work. Especially with the close-up lens, you can take a look at your Arduino projects, all your custom PCBs or maybe some modules, and quickly find areas in which the temperature is higher than it should be. Actually, let me show you some of my recordings. The one that you see right now is the soldering iron and you can see that even the USB power supply is getting hot. This is the Arduino board and there is almost no temperature difference between the Arduino chip and the rest of the PCB, which makes it quite obvious that you don't need any cooling for the default Arduino Uno board. This power extension cord also has the USB output and it generates a little bit of heat. Funny thing is that you cannot tell it by just touching it, but it's clearly visible on the thermal camera. It's probably not the best idea to touch this heater as the temperature goes above 100 degrees Celsius. And yes, that's kind of hot. I was having a lot of fun with this thermal camera and the gas stove. I mean, you can see the fire even without the camera, but it also shows you all those hot fumes. And it was even more fun once I added the pot with the water. You will see that once the water gets hot, it creates all those nice looking transitions. Almost like mixing a paint, but of course we are mixing the temperatures. I had to say that I had a lot of fun using this camera and seeing the world in a completely new way. It was very unusual experience. But the same goes with the Arduino module. I mean the resolution is very small, only 8x8 pixels or 8x8 temperature values. But you can still do quite a lot of cool things with this module. And that's pretty much it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.